waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. And if you are new to the saltwater aquarium hobby, this video is definitely for you. You know, I know when you're a beginner, there's a lot of different terms that are thrown around when it comes to a saltwater aquarium, and they can be a little bit confusing if you don't know what you are hearing. So I'm gonna go over the two main types of saltwater tanks that you can have, and then we're gonna go over some of the species of coral that you can keep inside those tanks. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, when it comes to saltwater tanks, you can either have those tanks with coral and without. We're gonna start on the tanks without coral. So fish only tanks is exactly what it sounds like is there's only gonna be fish in those tanks. And other times you can hear it referred to as fowler tanks, which stands for fish only with live rock. Now these systems are typically used if you have those species of fish that are Corellivores. Now Corellivore means that the fish are typically in the wild eating corals, so you don't want to put them with any of those expensive corals that you want to buy for your tank. A lot of times these fish can be like puffer fish or trigger fish or even some of the larger predators like lionfish that you don't typically see in those reef tanks. Now let's move on to reef tanks. So reef tanks are any sort of tanks that might have coral in them. Now you can find these tanks in a variety of different sizes. So typically when you hear the word reef tank, you're looking at anything, I would say above a 40 gallon and up. Now you can also hear tanks referred to as nano tanks. I would say that's anything like 30 gallons, 30 or 40 gallons down to maybe a 10 gallon tank. Now anything less than a 10 gallon tank is typically considered a pico tank. So those are the super, super small ones. Um, so there's a variety of different tank sizes, but most of them typically are still gonna have coral. Now, when it comes to coral tanks or reef tanks, you can have a bunch of different types of coral in the tank. So let's go over a couple of those. First off is SPS corals. Now that stands for small polyp stony coral. These species of corals are typically gonna need a lot more light and a lot more flow than the other corals that are on this list. Now, these aren't necessarily corals that I would recommend for beginners. A lot of times they're a good deal more sensitive to changes in water parameters, but they are some of the more sought after corals, especially for long-term collectors. Now, if you're trying to figure out what corals are the SPS corals, you could ha have things like Mataporas or some of the very popular Acroporas. They have things like the Walt Disney coral that are just flowing with color and are very sought after. Okay, now our next category of corals is going to be LPS corals. LPS stands for large polyp stony corals. Now these guys, um, unlike the SPS corals, they're not gonna need as much requirements when it comes to light and flow. And when it comes to beginners, they're a lot easier for beginners to take care of. So if you are just starting out, these are the ones that I would recommend for you. And actually, LPS corals are some of my favorite. The first ones that I fell in love with are those scolies or scolemias. They come in amazing, beautiful colors, and they're so much fun to watch eat. But other ones are things like the candy cane corals or even things like those favias. So if you are a beginner, maybe stick towards those LPS corals. The next category of corals that are on our list are NPS coral. Now, NPS stands for non-photosynthetic. Now, unlike the other ones that we've talked about on this list, these corals don't have zooxanthellae in them, so they're not able to produce their own food, which means that you're gonna need to take a lot of care when it comes to making sure that they're fed. You can do things like target feeding, or you can do broadcast feeding where you get the food dispersed throughout the tank, but food is really important for them. Now, these types of corals, the, the popularity of them in the aquarium community is just starting to grow and you can see more and more people that are keeping these corals, but they have things like the sun corals or even the dendros, and sometimes you'll see sea fans in there. So if that is your cup of tea, then maybe look for some of those NPS corals. 
Okay, now our second to last group of corals is going to be our soft corals, or sometimes as they're referred to, softies. These include things like mushrooms and leathers. Now these are great ones to keep if you are traveling a lot and don't have a lot of time to dedicate to your tank. These are relatively forgiving when it comes to mistakes and swings in water quality. Now, one thing I will warn you with mushrooms, especially um, depending on the species, can actually take over a tank quite quickly. So you want to make sure that you at least keep an eye on them and make sure they're not traveling around the tank where you don't want them. Okay, now the last type of saltwater tank that you might have when it comes to coral is a species-specific tank. Sometimes you'll see species-specific um, with anemones. People can have anemones in reef tanks, but they can also have anemone cubes or anemone-specific tanks. It's really fun if you enjoy watching that relationship between the clownfish and the anemones. Another example of a species-specific tank would be something like seahorses. The primary species in there is what you're focusing on and you're not trying to include a lot of other stuff. Now you may have also heard the term mixed reef when you've come across reading materials about saltwater tanks and that just means that you're including corals that might be SPS and LPS and even some of those NPS and soft corals in your tank. You're not just limiting yourself to one of those types. All right, this has been Hillary for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.